a supermodel can go and be a rapper or a musician and they are instantly career is going to go astronomically farther than someone that's been working for 10 years for it. It's busy baby, 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 it's busy um, so right now I'm going to talk about a topic that I feel passionate about, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. This is why you should quit being a rapper. It's 2019. I, I've been an artist before. I worked with a bunch of artists. You know, it worked for me to DJ to you know just being a straight up artist, being a producer. And I'm going to tell you why you need to quit being an artist in 2019. First off, you have to be insane to want to be a rapper. Like, this is why you need to stop rapping. You, it had to be insane to be a rapper. Here, I'm going to tell you why. First off, it doesn't make physical sense. Okay? So, you, you want to be a rapper. First thing you got to do is what? You have to have beats. So, either boom, you have to pay for the beats. Then what you have to do after you have the beats? You have to write the song, right? Writing the song is free, but you have to pay for the beat. And now you have to record yourself. You have to get recording. So, you have to go pay an engineer to record you as well as mix and master that song. And then you have to distribute that song. Nowadays, it's a little better. You can find a way to do it for free, but you used to have to pay. Now you can, or maybe even pay DistroKid, something like, what, $10, $25, whatever the heck it is, um, to be able to distribute your music. Now you distribute it. Now you've already paid um, for all that. And then on top of that, you have to pay for a music video if you really want the song to pop and do and do make some noise. So now you've paid for a beat. You've paid for studio time. you pay paid for the mixing, the engineering. Oh, I forgot. You have to pay for the artwork as well. And then you also have to pay for a music video to help promote the song. And you do all this, and no one's going to listen to the song unless you actually promote it. So you have to spend money on Facebook advertising as well, uh, social media advertising. You have to go and hit the streets and go meet people. So now you're spending your most valuable thing of life, which is time, to tell people about your song. And then you know what? You know what? You can do all of that just for Spotify to pay you like three damn dollars when he gets a couple thousand streams. And then you know what? To stay hot, you have to rinse and repeat that process over and over and over. And then on top of that, then you have to go do shows, right? So let's say that you're not a popular rapper. You're going to have to go do shows. And no one's going to want to pay you to do a show if you can't bring people out. So on top of that, it's hard enough to get people to listen to your song. It's way even harder to get people to pull up for shows. So you're either doing a show for free because you can't bring people out like that and you're trying to get exposure. On top of that, people have to have seen you perform before to possibly even want to book you for a show. And you have to have a local name for them to want to even want to book you for a show as well. Um, so let's not even factor all of that in. Let's say, boom, you have to go do a show. You might be doing it for free. So, one, you're not getting paid for the show. You're trying to just get exposure so that these people can come to the show for whoever else is on the bill and then be like, oh, this artist is dope. Let me go listen to the songs he performed. Or you're trying to finesse or trying to mangle into wanting to get paid, and the promoter looks back at you and says, hey, um, what's the point of me paying you if you can't even bring 10, 15 people out? Or you have those companies that try to do the nice split to where they say, hey, you make money after you sell 15 tickets. Right, you get to keep all the profit or split the profit or whatever the heck they want to do this time, right? So you're doing all of this just to keep rinse and recycling these these processes. So then, when you're a rapper and you try to go back and you say, "Hey, man, I've done this process four times," right? Now you're in a hole. Let's say thousand, couple, maybe two thousand dollars or whatever it is, right? If you're on the cheaper end, um, not even counting for the videos, you know. Let's say you did four times, so you're out like three thousand dollars, right? Boom. You don't do this, dropped four singles. Don't even have an album yet. This is what you did for four singles. And now you're that rapper that everyone hates. Because now you want to go to the producer and say, hey, bro, I'm really not making any money off of this. Is there any way I can get a free beat or get a discount on your beat? Producer's like, oh, F you. I need money. Pay me, right? Then you go to the artist and like, hey, you know, I'm really not making any money off this music, man. Is there any way you can give me a lower price and give me cheaper? No, forget you. I'm an artist. I need my money. Then you go to the promoter like, hey, man, this is like, I need a show. Like, I need to get paid for these shows. Like, I'm not making any money off this music. They're like, no, forget you. You don't bring enough people out. I'm not paying you. I'll go get somebody else. Same thing with the engineer and recording engineer. They're like, nope, this is my studio. You need to pay me. I'm creative. And then the resources as an artist to come back to you is minimal. That's why you need to stop being an artist. In 20, that's why you need to stop being a rapper in 2019, man. 
2019, we always had these arguments back and forth in the music industry about, oh man, artists need to get paid this, we need to get paid that, man, producers get some mad rappers rap about money, and they're like, oh, da, da, da. Man, that's the money from their day job, bro. I don't have money to pay you for these beats because I'm broke. Ask Spotify. That's why no producers want to go the like Measure Boom and producer route of where they drop their own music and see what it's like to be an artist because they're not getting any bread back from it. And you know what? I don't want this to seem like a rant that's against everyone else in the industry, but that that is the truth. That is the truth of it. Everyone in the industry gets their money, gets their payment, except the artist. The artist gets the lowest end. And you want to know why? Because as an artist, it takes the most amount of money to break you. Think about it. As a producer, all you need to do is what? Learn how to produce. You know, that's time that, that can't be actually, you know, put in quantified into money. So you have to go buy a computer. You maybe buy some keyboards, some instruments, um, maybe recording equipment if you want to go a little further and record live instruments. But at the least, all you need is a computer and download uh, your DAW, FL Studio, Ableton, whatever you want to use, machine. You go do that, and then instantly you can go make some beats and put it online, and people are going to pay you. And they're going to pay you good, quantifiable money. A beat goes for what? Like, I say a wave lease, I can get one for like $50. You're not seeing a rapper being able to sell one song for $50. Think about it. That's them selling the beat multiple times over and over and over. Right? Let's go back to someone else in the industry. Let's say, um, you know, the artist. The artist, once you get like Photoshop, right? Get a computer. Get Photoshop. I, I don't even want to put computer in these expenses because most people nowadays have a computer. So really, all you really have to do is just buy Photoshop, right? Um, so boom, you get that, and then you just learn, and you, and you work on your craft, that's time, same thing the artists would do, all the rest of these artists, same thing, you need time to perfect your craft, and boom, you're getting paid for artwork. Some people could just hit the conceptual art, and it's just, this is just nothing but a white label with some text. I just found some good text from defonce.com, and boom, that's it right there, now pay me. Again, not saying it's a ripoff, I'm just saying that that's, that's the truth of it. Now you instantly have value where someone's going to pay you some money for your album art. Artists don't even have that. Artists are fighting for you to stream my song one time for dollar for a, something like third of a penny, right? Um, and then you go into engineers. Engineers, they gotta get recording equipment. They they have to learn how to run Pro Tools or Logic, whatever you guys want to use. And more or less in today's real sense, they really could just get Logic and a microphone and be good enough to record people on a really low end. On you know the better producers, obviously we're gonna have you know some preamps. We're gonna get some more recording equipment. We're gonna learn how to actually mix, master, and engineer. But realistically, there's enough presets out there for you can go on YouTube and download somebody's Pro Tools presets. Use the default plugins that come in the Pro Tools and have a pretty decent sound and sound. That's it, realistically. And then now you're charging people for studio time. But what does the artist get? The artist gets nothing fiscally. I feel like the industry has made it to where when you see an artist, you're like, they make the most amount of money. Because what? When you're a big major label artist and you they've funded the money where people are, have eyes on you, they're looking at you to where, oh, you can charge people for features. And a feature, you all you did was you bought the studio time for your album or your songs or whatever. You just do a quick little... 10 minute feature for somebody, take 10 minutes to record it, boom, you're done, you done made that feature money. Second, you can do shows. So you drop your album, you pay the producer, you know, for your, all the money for your album to get done, and then you're touring off of this album for another year, making money off those shows that the producer isn't making money for. That's the mindset. Same thing with the album artist. You paid them one time for the album, boom, now you're touring, making money off of the album. Uh, same thing with the engineer. Record those songs, they're one and done, right? And an artist is supposed to have longevity in the game. Producers do as well. They're supposed to get residuals for album sales. But like I said, as a as an artist, you know you're not making money off of album sales anymore, right? So, and then the promoter, they're making money because at this point, like, you're bringing people into the door. All they have to do is just book you. That's it. Book you and put your name on a flyer. So it's crazy when I see, like, you know, regular local artists talking about things on that big artist level. Oh, I shouldn't have to promote the show. You don't have a big enough name to not promote the show. Your name isn't big enough to just say, oh, hey, I'm so-and-so, he's performing here. Then 100 people are going to pull out just because. You know what I'm saying? And then even then, that's not even true because big artists still promote that they're going to be on festivals. Big artists still promote that they're going to, what, where, what cities they're going to be in. So stop like all of this like fake news that comes to artists about what their value is. Your value as a rap artist 
is the amount of people that will come to see you at a show and how many eyes are on you. Period. You can get an endorsement deal that you can get an endorsement deal just for how many people are watching you make moves. Simple as that. You know, rap artists were the first like influencers around there. One of the first influencers there next to you know sports athletes. Like you can make money off of that that not a lot of people can because you have an image and a face. But the only way that you can make money off that is if you make that name. So you know what? I'll take it back right here. I want to say this is why people have to quit rapping. That this is why they have to stop rapping is stupid. But here's the thing. So if you want to be a rapper in 2019 and you want to be successful, what you need to do is get a team of about six, seven people, right? So what you need to do is have yourself. You want to be the rapper. You need to get someone else that's going to be a rapper with you. They're going to be a songwriter. And you guys are going to be a duo, you know? Not duos and oh, we're going to rap on every song together, but it's like this is someone that's going to be able to hold you accountable and someone else is also going to be able to reap the benefits of what this whole group is going to do. And, then, and not everyone's depending on just you. That's the important thing. Second, you need to get a producer and then you need to get a second producer. Again, these people are going to work like a team. So it's like, hey, I, if I need beats from someone, I can get it from A or I can get them from B. And sometimes A and B can come together to make collaborate on beats, and we got a whole bunch of beats. This way, you guys are never on a shortage. You're not draining out one person on your team. Um, I guess another one would be a recording engineer. You can have just one of these because uh, you probably aren't going to be recording too, too much. But this is where you're building up your team to where, all right, we're recording enough where we have two artists, we have two people making beats that you're getting enough influx and enough training to where like you're gonna be a dope engineer. Like you have, we have dope enough work within our own circle to keep going. Um, fifth is oh no yeah fifth is you need your own um, your own visual artist. So you're gonna need a videographer. You're gonna need a cameraman. And think about this as I'm saying these principles. Think about all the successful artists who have done this, and this is what their team has been like. Like Wiz Khalifa when he came up, this is what his team looked like. They had a, they had producer, they had an engineer, they had someone on the camera. Same thing with Machine Gun Kelly when he was doing those logs. They had a machine gun. They had like they, this is their this is the formula for making as a rap artist because once you guys are all built into this team and you guys are all realizing like hey we have a person for everybody we have a cameraman we have someone that's going to edit and then you guys can go back and forth on what you're doing because editing and videography does you know wear you guys down a lot it does have a lot of things to learn too um and once you guys all make your your micro investments into your little niche within your group and you guys come together and make all of this and this is mostly going to work people from scratch, you know. A lot of people that are established aren't going to want to go this route. But once you guys make this whole team here together, you are effectively everything. You guys are looking at a package now of when, um, let's say, someone wants to book you for a show. You're like, hey, you need to charge me because I'm coming with me. I'm coming with, I'm selling at least six different tickets because I have a whole team of people here. So, you know, me. Um, my boy that's also rapping with me probably gonna do a song with it. Um, you also have your two producers that can come on there with you. One of them can end up being a DJ, both of them can end up being a DJ, and you guys double function on that. Um, you're gonna have your own engineer that can come in and make sure your sound sounds good for the live sound. And then you have your videographer people here that can videotape your performance as well as offer possibly videotaping everyone else's performance. Boom, that's a package. You're getting paid for a show, you're getting that money, you're bringing value. Even if you can't bring that many people there, which is doubtful because now you have a team of six people that's promoting the show versus just one. But um, that, that's, that's another route. And then think about it. When someone wants to charge a feature, now you got a homie like, hey, we have our own studio. You can record your song here. I'll do my feature here. Oh, we also got a video guy. We can shoot a video for it. Now your whole team is making money. You guys are all circulating me. I feel like at this point in 2019, everybody wants to be a rapper. Everyone's upset that they're not blowing up and this is the reason why you focus on getting more people to watch you you focus on more people to come out to your shows and physically being involved in your career that's where your value and money's at that's why a supermodel can go and be a rapper or a musician and their instantly career is going to go astronomically farther than someone that's been working for 10 years for it because they have the eyes and people that want to watch them they may not have people that want to come out to the show but that's something that you can always work on by, again, meeting people physically. Because guess what? If some hot model I follow right now on Instagram became a rapper, I might check out the song. I might. I'm definitely going to check out the video because I think she, look, she might be hot. You know what I'm saying? But will I go to the show? That's a 50-50. But if they reached out and said, hey, I really want you to come out to the show, you're probably going to go out. And you may not do that on the first time you're doing it on the second time. Maybe the third time they reach out and say, hey, come out to the show, you're going to come. You know? Um, so that, that's just something I feel like... I, 
I need to say for 2019. Let me know what you guys think. Should people continue to be rappers in 2019? If you if you are, do you think my formula that I'm telling you that on how to be successful will work? Let me know what you guys think in the comments.